Hello, good morning and welcome once again to today's presentation on the umbilical cord and the placenta. Now the umbilical cord uh, is the cord which connects the fetus with the placenta in utero. And this umbilical cord is derived from the duct which forms between the amniotic sac and the yolk sac. Situation wise, it extends from the fetal surface of the placenta to the umbilical area of the fetus and it normally inserts uh, at the center of the placenta. The size measures between 40 to 50 centimeters or sometimes 50 to 60 uh, centimeters in length and also 1 to 2 centimeters uh, in uh, diameter. When we look at the shape of the cord, as the name implies, it's like a cord and has about 40 twists uh, in it. Looking at the structure, we have amniotic uh, uh, you know, covering or the amnion covers the cord and it is a continuation of that covering uh, which forms the fetal surface of the placenta and the skin and the amniotic membrane are also derived from the uh, ectoderm, the same uh, ectoderm. And when we look uh, at the structure, we find uh, three blood vessels. We have one umbilical vein and two uh, umbilical arteries. The umbilical uh, vein transport oxygen and nutrients from the maternal uh, blood and the two umbilical arteries will return waste products from the fetus to the placenta where uh, they fuse with maternal circulation for excretion. Now uh, these uh, uh, blood vessels are coiled around each other within the cord and uh, they are continuous with the coronic uh, villi of the placenta. The next thing we see on the structure uh, is uh, the Watson's uh, jelly and uh, this is a jelly-like uh, substance which surrounds the blood vessel and it's also uh, derived from uh, the mesoderm. And it is this uh, uh, Watson's jelly which determines the thickness or the thinness of the umbilical cord. And uh, we realize that there are no nerves and lymphatic uh, you know, vessels inside the umbilical cord. Now, when we look at uh, the abnormalities of the umbilical cord, so uh, we realize uh, that the length of the cord in a full term fetus is approximately uh, 40 to 60 uh, cent, uh, you know, uh, centimeters. And uh, if the cord is long or longer, we may have different uh, problems uh, being associated uh, with this, and uh, such as the cord can easily prolapse, which will be an obstetric emergency. For you to go into section the woman to prevent the presenting part from nipping the cord which will also endanger the life of uh, the fetus and also the cord can entangle itself and uh, it's sometimes because it's so long it can you know uh, go around uh, the baby sometimes even uh, strangling uh, the baby around uh, the neck and also at the extremities of the fetus now when the cord is also very short we may have it being relatively short or absolutely uh, short uh, a relatively short umbilical cord may be due to the entanglement of the cord around parts of uh, the fetus and an absolute uh, you know shortening of the cord uh, is seen when the cord is less than 40 centimeters and this uh, usually can lead to uh, instances of 
placenta abrupts you so that anytime the fetus uh, you know moves within uh, the uterus it tries to detach it pulls on the placenta and gradually tries to you know uh, 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 detach the placenta from the uterus it may also uh, make it difficult for external version especially uh, when the you know uh, the lie of the fetus is transverse and so you may want to correct you know uh, the lie and also uh, you know malpresentations this uh, shortening uh, cord as well as the uh, you know uh, long excessively long cord may all cause uh, fetal distress in labor and so on the uh, left hand side we can see the structure of the umbilical cord where we have the Watson's jelly around it, we have uh, the umbilical veins as well as the artery over there. Now, uh, more on the abnormalities of the uh, umbilical cord, we may have what we call the true knots and also the false knot. When we say true knot is formed because uh, of the high mobility of the fetus and also, uh, you know, polyhydramnose. And so uh, the fetus moves excessively uh, in utero and tries to tie, you know, itself with the cord and so usually you see true knot it forms and not like a, a ligature uh, in utero i'll show you pictures of it very soon and during labor this may lead to you know intrauterine hypoxia of the fetus as well uh, a false knot is usually as a result of the accumulation of watson's jelly uh, you know or due to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, varicose veins uh, in the umbilicus now we may also have uh, you know inappropriate attachment of the cord as an abnormality and in this case we may have what we call the battle door insertion uh, of the cord whereby the um, the cord attaches itself to the margins of the placenta instead of attaching itself into the center of the uh, placenta then we also have the uh, velamentous placenta uh, where the cord is attached to the membranes uh, you know of uh, the placenta i'll show you pictures very soon we may also have uh, what we call uh, vasa previa in this case, when one or more of the fetus's placenta or the umbilical blood vessels crosses or even run near the internal opening or the internal os of the uterus, and sometimes usually beneath the baby, that's the presenting part, below the presenting part. Now, when this happens, these vessels may tear when the membranes rupture, and this will lead to rapid fetal hemorrhage, which will endanger the life of uh, the fetus. Usually, uh, it causes you know uh, the exsanguination of uh, the fetus, and this is when uh, the blood in the fetus is being drained outside, and this is a very quick way of killing uh, this baby. Now. Uh, these are some of uh, the photos of what we've just talked about. The first uh, picture on the left, you know, upper corner uh, shows true uh, knots and below it we have the false knots. Then we have the battle door insertion of the cord whereby the cord is, uh, you know, inserting into the edges of the or the margins of the uh, placenta then we have the velamentous uh, insertion whereby the cord inserts into the membranes of the placenta then vasa previa as you can see in the left lower uh, uh, diagram the vessels of the umbilical cord uh, it's below the presenting part and also you know above the internal os and so when the membranes uh, rupture the vessels are the ones which are leading in the possibility that they may you know uh, uh, tear or rupture is very high and it will cause you know uh, uh, examination of uh, the fetus now let's look at the abnormalities of the placenta uh, basically we have uh, what we call the placenta uh, sosenturator and this is a placenta in which an accessory cotyledon develops away from the main placenta structure and so we may have the main placenta structure and also you know something small forming 
outside you know the main uh, placenta and it's usually uh, you know a cotyledon uh, from the placenta now blood vessels may travel across the membrane to connect this sosenterate lobe with the main uh, placenta and when this happens two main problems uh, may occur usually the accessory uh, lobe might be retained after the uh, placenta has been you know uh, uh, delivered and it can also uh, give rise to postpartum hemorrhage or even uh, intrauterine infection and also secondary postpartum uh, hemorrhage the second uh, complication which may uh, occur uh, due to placenta uh, susenterata is feta anoxia and this can be caused either by the presenting parts of the fetus, uh, you know, pushing against the vessels which connects uh, the lobe of the placenta or uh, by, you know, uh, the membranes rupturing and, you know, involving the vessels uh, in this. Uh, so these are some of the complications that we can see from placenta susenterata. Now, the second abnormality of placenta development that we can see is the uh, placenta by uh, patita. And in this case, we have two separate areas of the placenta tissue which uh, develops, but there are no connecting blood vessels uh, between them as we saw uh, with uh, the first one. And uh, there is uh, only one umbilical cord uh, which divides and sends a branch to each lobe of uh, you know, uh, the placentas. And we can easily distinguish this uh, with, you know, uh, this, we can easily distinguish this abnormality, uh, you know, from twin placenta where the two cords will be you know, present each supplying you know uh, the placentas and usually there are no compli complications associated uh, you know with this type of uh, 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 placenta uh, development now we may also have the placenta uh, uh, you know uh, uh, velamentosa and when we say uh, placenta velamentosa it's uh, usually uh, an abnormality of cord insertion uh, rather than uh, you know uh, placenta uh, development and uh, as we've seen earlier on uh, uh, this abnormality of cord insertion uh, is because the cord inserts into the membranes of the placenta and the blood vessels uh, you know will travel between the cords and the placenta across the membranes and so uh, basically it's an abnormality of the cord other than the abnormality of the uh, placenta now we may also uh, talk about the placenta uh, extra Coriaris. When we say uh, placenta extra coriaris, uh, what we mean is that uh, it is a condition in which uh, the transmission from a membranous to velous uh, chorion does not occur, you know, at the placenta edge, but, uh, you know, at some variable distance within uh, the circumference uh, of the placenta and so in this case we it results in a smaller chorionic plate uh, than the basal plate and uh, basically we can talk about two main types of uh, extrachoria placentas and in this case uh, we have what we call the circumvallate uh, placenta when we say uh, circumvallate uh, placenta uh, it means uh, during the development of the placenta the amnion and the uh, you know chorion uh, double back around the circumference of the placenta and this gives the appearance of a collar i'll show a picture of it very soon so that you can see it uh, the chorion is therefore still continuous with the edge of the placenta but its attachment is folded back on the fetal surface of uh, the placenta and because of this uh, the edge of the placenta is more easily detached from the uterine wall and this may result in you know uh, uh, instances of uh, antipartum hemorrhage and uh, also uh, it can uh, also uh, cause a lot of uh, other complications uh, in the woman.
Now, the main cause of this is not uh, well, uh, you know, known. And so we always uh, uh, advise that complete examination of the placenta be done, you know, following uh, delivery. We may also uh, have placenta uh, marginata. And in this, we have a, a thin fibrous ring, uh, you know, which is present at the margin of the chorionic plate where the fetal vessels appear to uh, terminate. Now, uh, let's look at uh, some uh, more of the uh, placenta abnormalities. Uh, we can talk about placenta previa and I have a separate video on placenta previa and so over here I'll just mention uh, what it is and move on. Basically, uh, it is the abnormal positioning of the placenta rather than the fundus of the uterus and so we may have four main types of the placenta uh, previa we have type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 in a type 1 uh, we may have the uh, placenta lying partly in the lower uterine segment as you can see in the right lower uh, uh, structure it is also known as the low lying placenta then we also have type 2 placenta whereby uh, the placenta lies mostly in the uh, in the lower uterine segment and reaches margins of the internal os, and so we call it the marginal uh, previa. Then type three uh, uh, previa is where uh, the placenta partly, you know, covers the internal os, and so we call it the partial uh, previa. And uh, complete covering of the uh, internal os is what we refer to as type four uh, previa. Now, these are examples or photos of uh, uh, various types of placentas. You can see the normal placenta with the umbilical cord in the center. And also, you can see the cotyledons, very nice. Then, we have the velamentous placenta where it inserts into the membranes. Then, we have the bipartita uh, you know, uh, placenta whereby we have two separate uh, tissues of the placenta with one umbilical cord. Then, we have the sesenturate placenta whereby you have a sesenturate lobe uh, which has blood supply to uh, these uh, you know uh, lobe and also we have what we call the circumvallic placenta and you can see as i said it forms a collar around uh, you know uh, it now what are some of the pathological uh, you know conditions of the placenta basically we can talk about uh, premature degeneration of uh, the placenta and uh, this uh, uh, premature degeneration of the placenta is usually uh, as a result of uh, some maternal disease such as essential hypertension and also uh, renal uh, diseases. And what happens is that these uh, conditions usually narrow the lumen of the blood vessels and you know the uh, blood supply to the placenta is usually you know reduced and uh, Inadequate placenta, uh, you know, development occurs, and large areas of the, you know, tissue may die as a result of decreased uh, blood supply to that part, and this may lead to fetal death and even, you know, the termination of pregnancy before the 28 weeks of pregnancy. Now, another uh, uh, complication that uh, we can talk about, and. Uh, uh, we can see these uh, complications also in uh, the form of infarcts uh, and uh, these infarcts are largely due to the degeneration of the placenta as we've seen uh, before now uh, in uh, severe cases uh, these degeneration may be worsened by pregnancy induced hypertension or pre uh, eclampsia and uh, this is because uh, pre eclampsia uh, causes uh, arterial uh, spasm and so uh, uh, large infected areas may result uh, you know uh, in the placenta insufficiency and so Basically, uh, it is uh, recommended that uh, labor be induced before term to prevent, you know, further uh, deterioration of the fetal uh, life. 
Now, uh, when pregnancy is prolonged, uh, you know, for more than 40 weeks, extensive, uh, you know, uh, calcareous uh, degeneration occurs uh, of the post-mature placenta, and this too can cause fetal anoxia before or during labor. And so, it is uh, advisable to always uh, induce labor before term to prevent all these uh, complications. Now, we can also talk about edema of uh, the fetus and this is basically uh, uh, when we see a large pale uh, also a waterlogged placenta uh, which is uh, always associated with severe hemolytic disease of uh, the newborn and what we see that what we see is that uh, uh, the placenta may weigh you know about half of the weight of the fetus and uh, we usually call this the uh, hydrops uh, fetalis now the next complication or the next pathology that we can see is the excessive size of the uh, placenta and this is found usually uh, in association with uh, you know syphilis and usually uh, we may find uh, you know on microscopy we may find some spiral sheds uh, you know on microscopy now a quick one on uh, the clinical significance of placenta uh, extra uh, corealis is that it may cause uh, increased uh, chance of abortion and it also uh, increase uh, you know uh, vagina discharge and so there will be excessive watery vagina uh, discharge from this uh, pregnant woman it may also cause antipartum uh, hemorrhage and also we may have uh, growth retardation of the fetus as well as preterm delivery and retained products after the placenta has been uh, expelled thank you very much for your time see you Bye-bye.